You're listening to Pod for Israel. For more information, go to oneforisrael.org. I want to welcome you guys to Pod for Israel. This is our first podcast that we're doing from our campus in Netanya, Israel. And so I have Dr. Golan Barosh with me. He's the author of a book called Rabbinic Judaism Debunked. And he's one of our professors here at the Bible College. And you have some really interesting perspectives on the scripture, interesting perspectives on Judaism, on how it is today. And I just wanted to kind of pick your brain and get some of that juicy, awesome knowledge from you. Yeah, shalom. Thank you for the opportunity. So uh, right, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that uh, we're going to say some uh, provocative things that would make uh, that would make you think. But it's all backed up with the uh, with scholarship, with research, and um, yeah, I'm, I would love to, uh, to to start us off by uh, you know by saying uh, at least one provocative thing, which which is that um, rabbinic Judaism is actually not so Jewish. And the um, actually, I have a book here by an Israeli professor, mind you, from the Hebrew University, and his all his whole uh, thesis is that the, uh, the roots, the roots of the Jewish faith is in Christianity. He talks about the Christian roots hmm. of the rabbinic faith. So wait, and, wait a second. You're saying an Israeli professor wrote this book. What's it called? Yeah, prof- professor. It's Professor Israel Yaakov Yuval. And the book, actually, the book exists in English. If you want, uh, we, 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 can, we can make it available later. But his all, his all thesis, his all, um, his all goal is to show that the um, rabbinic Judaism has its roots deep in Messianic Judaism. Wow, that's yeah. that's shocking. That's crazy. That's, that's amazing. He has, actually, he has a lecture in YouTube, this professor, and the title of the lecture is The Christian Roots of the Jewish Faith. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this guy, what's his background? He's a believer? He's, he's not a believer. He's secular. a secular Jewish professor, actually really world-known uh, world wow. professor. Yeah. Wow. And... Um, uh, th- this is exactly, by the way, this is exactly what we try to show here in Month for Israel, here in the college, to go back to the uh, to 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 the early Judaism and see how Jewish is rabbinic Judaism, and uh, the more we study, the more we see that compare to the Bible, compare to the Old Testament, and compare to the uh, to the New Testament. Rabbinic Judaism is not so Jewish. Wow, that's thought. amazing because I mean, typically here the other way around, you know, like our roots are in Judaism, or you know. Our faith is Jewish, actually. So uh, this professor has an example. He says the first Seder, the first Passover, the first Passover Seder, which is recorded in history, is the Last Supper with Yeshua and his disciple. Wow. He said it's the first recorded Seder. I don't know how you say it in English. How do you put yeah, the, yeah, the Passover Seder, Seder? Passover Seder. The Passover yeah. night. Yeah. So the first uh, me- gathering of the Seder. Is recorded in the New Testament. So, and so basically, rabbis, what people say is the the Lord's Supper. We we kind of know that more in the in the church is the Lord's Supper, is actually the first seder recorded the first in history. Recorded seder in history, according to this secular, you know, Hebrew uh, Hebrew University professor. Wow, he's he's not ashamed. You know, he's he's gonna he's gonna say it. He's gonna, and he has a few other examples. But this is one of the uh, most obvious examples. The the first uh, the first seder, the first Passover, yeah. Well, so if um, if Judaism got their roots from rabbinic Judaism, rabbinic Judaism got its roots from Christianity, from basically messianic from the Judaism. messianic Jews, then then what happened to rabbinic Judaism? Okay, so so, so we have to start the, the the starting point, ground zero, if you want. Ground zero is the year seventy or sixty eight, sixty eight mm-hmm. seventy, when the first temple colla- co- collapsed. When the first, mm-hmm. this, excuse me, the second temple collapsed. When the second temple was destroyed, uh, you can say biblical, uh, uh, biblical Judaism, the old uh, Torah Judaism, the Torah that the, the, the Judaism that was based on the temple, was destroyed. Right. Seventy A.D. was destroyed. Hmm. The, it, it, the old covenant was gone, and there has to be there had to be a new covenant. There had to be a new Judaism that would rise on the ashes. Of the of the destruction of the second temple, mm. and on that there were two streams, two uh, two cults or two sects in Judaism, Messianic Judaism and Rabbinic Judaism. Each offered a new covenant. Hmm. The the believers of the followers of Yeshua of Jesus followed the new covenant with his blood. 
the rabbis, the rabbinic side, follow a new covenant that they cut with the oral law. I call it the new covenant of the oral law. Each says that the, you know, we, we say we see Yeshua all over scriptures, all over the Hebrew scriptures. We say, we, 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 say we, we see Yeshua in Genesis, we, see, we, we, we can find Yeshua in Exodus. In all the Bible, we can see prophecies about Yeshua. The rabbinic side would say the, the same thing. You can see the yeshiva, you know, the, how would you say the yeshiva where they study uh, yeah. what's, uh, what, what is called Torah, but they study the Gemara, the mm-hmm. yeshiva. So the, the, you, you can see the, the figures of the Bible studying in yeshiva. You can see the oral law. And all the Bible is all about the oral law for the rabbinic side. Mm. So we have two sects, two parties that came after the destruction of the temple, each claiming for a new covenant. The rabbinic new covenant... But firstly, the Messianic New Covenant by the blood of Yeshua. And mm-hmm. the question is, not if it's not a struggle between Christianity and Judaism. The question is, who's, who's the real New Covenant? Who's the real Judaism? Oh. What's, the, what's the true extension of the Bible? Because again, after the Second Temple was destroyed, the, 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 the biblical Judaism was over with. There had to be a New Covenant of some sort. Is it the New Covenant of the rabbis? Or the new covenant of Yeshua. I think. I think an interesting perspective too is, it wasn't just that when the temple was destroyed, it was after Yeshua was risen, they started noticing some strange things not happening in the temple. In the, the temple, supernatural says, kind of departed from. And, and, you, the and temple. you're right. Actually, in the Talmud, it says that 40 years before the temple was destroyed, and this is exactly the year when Yeshua was crucified. 40 years before the temple was destroyed, weird things. Used to, uh, happened in the in the temple. Uh, one of them was the God didn't receive the, was what, didn't receive anymore the sacrifice that was uh, that was given in Yom Kippur and the daily sacrifice. Describe that. What happened? And it, it and it was so fierce that the Talmud records a, a, a Rabbi uh, Ben Zakai, Yohanan Ben Zakai, rebuking the temple and saying that the, saying to the temple, "What's wrong with you? What's going on here?" And this is forty years before the destruction mm. of the temple. The year that Yeshua was crucified, God didn't receive any more the, sacri- the, the sacrificial system. A new covenant had to come in place. And by the way, uh, Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai is considered to be the founder of the, new, of the rabbinic new covenant. Hmm. He's the founder. He, he begged, he begged the, 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 the Roman emperor, take Jerusalem, take Jerusalem, but give me Yavne. Give me, I want to start Judaism afresh from Yavne. Take the old Judaism. Take the temple. Let me start a new ju- Judaism. And uh, I have, you know, what I do, what I show, what I show in, the, um, in, 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 in my research is that, uh, you know, the three pi- there were three pillars upon which biblical Judaism stood upon. The, the Torah stood upon. It was the, the written Torah, the priests, and the temple. Yeah? What the rabbis did is replaced it. The rabbis came instead of the priests. Hmm. The Bet Midrash came instead of the Bet Mikdash. The, uh, the, the yeshiva came instead of the temple. And the oral law replaced the written law. So if, if the three pillars was, were the Torah, the written Torah, the priests, and the temple, the rabbi said, no, no, no. Under, under our new covenant, under the rabbinic new covenant, we're going to have three new pillars. It's going to be the rabbis instead of the, uh, in, instead of the priests. It's going to be the yeshiva instead of the temple. And it's going to be the oral law instead of the written law. And we live actually in Israel. We live right now in this revolution. Hmm. In this rabbinic revolution. I call it the rabbinic reformation. Because it's nothing like the biblical Judaism. Nothing like the biblical faith. It's a totally new faith. It's a new covenant made by the image of the, of, of the rabbis. Wow, you know, this is, it's really interesting because I've just been reading through scriptures and I was going through the, you know, the kings of Israel and Jeroboam said, he broke off of Jerusalem, created his own thing. Hmm. And yet they still, even though they mixed idol worship and other pagan things in, because they had to have the supernatural, the supernatural at the time was in Jerusalem. Hmm. And here, they pulled away from God's plan, from the supernatural, to create their own supernatural. 
And if you look at on on Mount Carmel when Elijah's rebuking them, he says, "Serve Baal or serve Jehovah God." Yeah. And they answered him not. They were just as not willing to disavow the the tr- one true God as they were their idols. And they can take you even back. You know what happened on Mount Sinai? Just after they received the Ten Commandments. Moses is in the mountain. And what do the people of Israel replace Moses with? What do they replace God with? Mm. With the golden calf. With, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with a system made by men. They don't... You know, Moses is hearing from God. He's probably yeah. talking to Jesus on the mountain. And, 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 and the people of Israel, like now, like in the, under the rabbinic revolution, they replaced a, rev, a, 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 rel, a, a revelation... Religious re- religion, a religion that is that, that is based on God, by a man-made religion that doesn't need the supernatural. Wow! And in the rabbinic faith, you don't need the supernatural. What you need is rabbis. You need men. You need them. This is why many scholars are calling rabbinic Judaism a cult, a cult which is men-based. You gotta have a rabbi if you want to become religious today in Israel. What you need to do is, is, is go to a yeshiva or go to a rabbi and ask him, ask him to, to teach me how to, how to practice this and how to practice this and how to do this. No need of revelation whatsoever. So, so unlike our faith, it's not studying the Torah. It's not studying the scriptures. It's, it's actually studying man. S- uh, studying man-made scriptures, the oral law. And I'll give you even more. You know, if, if we, we talked about uh, bringing uh, c- c- controversial and provocative things, if, you, if, 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 if you're in Israel, you want to become religious. You, I don't know, you heard from God. You, the, the, what you need to do, what people think they need to do is go to a rabbi and he will teach them how to, how to, pra- how to, uh, how to uh, wor- worship God. This is the conversion process. Yeah, and nothing, it's nothing to do with, 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 with a supernatural uh, spirit, you know, with, with, with being born again. Nothing to do with faith. It, you you got to put faith in something, but it's not in God. It's in men. And they will teach you their practices, their cultic practices, like, uh, you, you know, and the, there's, there's so many practices that has nothing whatsoever to do with the written Torah. It's all men-made mm. practices. Yeah. So you're saying if I go to yeshiva, I'm not they, because what they say is uh, come study Torah. Torah, yeah. The question is which Torah? Mm. You know, even if you, uh, I'll, 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 dare, I'll double dare you. If you go to any yeshiva, anywhere in the world, I know we have listeners from all over the world. Go to your uh, the, the yeshiva in the city near you. Go to a yeshiva and ask them what what, what do you study? I say, well, we study Torah, of course. Can you show me the books? And you will be surprised to see that his, it has nothing to do with the Bible. You wouldn't mm. find a Bible there. It's all about the Gemara, all about the Talmud. So the Torah that they're studying is not the, uh, the, the, the what we call the Torah. It's not the Torah of Moses. It's the Torah of Re- Rabbi Akiva, mm. which, as, a, as, as, as we mentioned earlier, wasn't even a Jew. <laughs> so the whole faith, the whole rabbinic faith is based on, on, on certain rabbis, which, were, which were, weren't Jews anyway. And he was from Babylon, right? Yeah. You know, he was the, um, he, he was, he was the, uh, Rabbi Akiva was the son of converts, of, of, of Gentile that so-called converted to Judaism. But Rabbi Akiva himself wasn't even, a, wasn't even Jewish. And the whole rabbinic faith is upon his shoulder. <laughs> so we have, again, we have a faith that um, uh, deliberately doesn't want the supernatural. First, you got to trust the rabbis. And, you know, mentioning the rabbis uh, reminds me that historically, and I told you that before, historically speaking, Yeshua, Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, is the first rabbi. He's the first person ever in history to get the title rabbi. So he's the first and only rabbi for us. Wow. But, uh, yeah, but historically speaking, he's the first uh, figure to receive the title Rabbi, R A B B I, yeah, Rabbi. Wow. So in Yeshua. in any literary format, any, it's the first time it ever appears. The first l- literary format that the word Rabbi appears is in, in the New Testament, and the first time it appears, it refers to the to, to to Yeshua the Messiah. Wow. So he's the first Rabbi. We know he's the first and the last and the only Rabbi, 
but he but he rebuked the the other rabbis for 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 for, for liking the men men calling them in the street rabbi rabbi for receiving honor from men he rebuked mm-hmm. them and now we know in Israel there's you know that there's countless rabbis but what did Yeshua say don't call anybody a rabbi only the Messiah is your rabbi yeah. and he's oh. the first historically figure that is called rabbi anywhere else. Anywhere. So, so really, like where it draws a, a great contrast in an elemental format is when you look at uh, our faith in Yeshua, you know, as, uh, as believers around the world, if it doesn't match scripture, who cares what pastor, teacher, preacher, whatever he puts his title in his name, if it doesn't match scripture, throw it out. Now, on the we're other saying side, on the other side is rabbinic Judaism says, the rabbis actually have a higher uh, connection, a closer connection, a deeper authority than even the word or a word from God or supernatural anything. So the the Jerusalem Talmud, there were two Talmud, the the Babylon the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem. So in the Jerusalem Talmud, there's a figure called Rabbi Chagai, and Rabbi Chagai had a, had a dilemma. He knew that there's the, um, the 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 written the written covenant, the written law. And he knew that there's the oral law, the Talmud, the, 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 the oral covenant. And he said to himself, which is, which is higher? Which is, more, uh, which, is, which is better? Rabbi Haggai in the Talmud. And after, uh, after thinking about it, he got to, 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 the, to the overwhelming um, uh, conclusion. The oral law covenant is higher than the written covenant made by uh, with between God and Moses and the people of Israel, the oral law is higher, is more important, is better than the written law, and this is why in yeshiva you got to study the oral law. You know, it even says in the, one of the earliest writings of the rabbis, the Mishnah, it says, from five to ten, when a kid is from five years old to ten, you can he can study the Bible, but from ten and on, from the year ten, when he's ten years old and on, study the Mishnah and the and, and the Talmud. The the, the, the the Bible could be like an infrastructure for when, when between your five when you're five and ten, but later go to the Talmud, go to the real juice, to the real deal, the real thing, which is the Gemara, and this is what they do in the yeshiva. And again, I, I double dare any listener to go to any yeshiva around the world, ask them what do you study, show me, and you'll see. They study the the, the writings of their cult, the rabbinic cult. So uh, you know. To kind of bring this into something that we can, you know, step into and take action on, you know, with prayer and with, you know, even our personal life, you know, what what sort of encouragement would you give us? To, I mean, this is a lot of kind of heavy stuff. How would you actually encourage us today to kind of apply? I would do these what lessons? what Shaul, what, what what Paul the apostle did, because Paul came from this cult. Paul is saying, I was in the cult of the Pharisees. The rabbinic cult. I came out of this. God freed me. God rescued me out of this cult, out of my sin. And what did what did what, what did Paul do? What did Paul tell us to do? He was crying for the for, for the Jewish salvation. He was crying for them. He said, "I wish I I I I will be in hell for their sake." Yeah. yeah. I, I don't stop crying. They have a, a zeal for God, but without the knowledge of Christ, without right. the knowledge of Messiah. So I encourage all of the listeners to get the um, the attitude of Paul. Crying, yeah. praying for the Jewish people that God will open their eyes and release them from uh, f- from the holding of uh, of, of satanic uh, delusions. Right, because yeah. these are good people. Well, of many course. of them just the sweetest, and yeah. you know, it's this uh, deception that's been for so many years. Yeah, and you know, many of us in One for Israel came from you know from secular or, or religious background, and God just showed us the truth, revealed the truth through, through the Word of God, through Yeshua. Mm. Because Yeshua is the living Word of God, the Word can be becoming flesh, yeah. and and a, an authority in Scripture. Again, that whatever the, yeah. anyone else says, if it doesn't match the Scripture, throw it out. Exactly, exactly. And you know, this is why we have so many cults in the world. But, but, but what is a cult? Is a cult is always based on something external to the Bible. Hmm. 
and the, the, the rabbinic cult is one, one of the uh, one of the most um, uh, fine examples for a for, for such a strict cult that is you know maybe the rabbinic cult is the oldest cult ever for 2,000 years hmm. this cult is just growing and growing and now Israel unlike America and other uh, countries in the world where there's separation between between church and state in Israel there's no separation Israel is a religious country and the religion dominating, is the rabbinic faith. Hmm. The well, rabbinic we're going to have to pick that up on the next uh, episode. So you guys uh, keep tuning in every week and share with your friends, and we'll see you next week on Pod for Israel.